Apex in China is different. It's very different. But somehow at the same time, it's very similar to normal Apex. So I decided to download it and look at how different it is. And trust me, it gets weird. I mean, Caustic is now like a cute girl, but we'll get onto that one later. If you're not from China and you want to install this game, you have to jump through a lot of hoops. So thank you to the LeakerBot for helping me because I encountered many issues while downloading it. I think I have a slight issue. What am I clicking? But when we finally got on, I was officially in the game and very happy. Immediately after signing up, the game took me to a tutorial showing me how to run, how to slide and how to jump and also how to shoot and this is where we get our first view of how this game takes stuff from our version of apex and changes it one of the guns i picked up was an m401 which takes heavy ammo i guess a shield battery an evo shield and what seems to be a light mag after i picked all this stuff up a disembodied chinese voice told me to do something which i can only assume is to kill this guy so i gladly killed him we would later find out this guy is actually their version of gibby but once again we'll get onto that when i show you every legend ability one thing you may immediately notice is when I shoot an enemy, they spray green. Yes, in this version of Apex, blood is green because of censorship issues in China. You can't have blood in games. After this, the game started giving me pages of information which I couldn't understand because I'm a dumb British person. So I decided to drop my ability instead, which is this game's version of a lifeline drone. Yes, apparently this whole time, I was playing lifeline. She doesn't really look like Lifeline. The drone is cute though, you can definitely tell it's a dock drone. After this, it instructed me to drop my ultimate, which once again is very similar to our Lifeline ultimate. It's a care package, simple as. You can see how this game takes stuff from our Apex and switches it up a bit. A bit further on in the tutorial, I'm given a second gun, which is a Spitfire. It's definitely very, very close to a Spitfire. This is like if you asked me to draw a Spitfire from memory. With this Spitfire, I would go on to kill what I assume to be their version of Valk and their version of Pathfinder. And then I was thrown out the tutorial. I have finished it and it was time to get into a real game against real people, right? The game let me pick a first legend. I picked this guy because I assumed it was Pathfinder and I was correct. This guy is just a little version of Pathfinder which actually has some very interesting abilities that I would kind of like as a Pathfinder perk on our version of Apex. And then boom, not long after I was in a game and I was in a classic battle royale lobby. If you used to play games like H1Z1 back in the day or PUBG back in the day, you might remember it was a big thing to make people People wait in a big waiting room until the lobby of the battle royale game was filled and this game has that i just looked around at some people found it pretty interesting but overall nobody seemed too intelligent and then before we knew it boom i was in the game and we were dropping and it turns out i was dropping with three other people yes this game has quads instead of trios which with the recent leaks that apex is gonna get a quads mode i find pretty interesting immediately when i dropped picked up some weapons you know default apex player behavior until my eyes were drawn to this this is a gravity cannon from Storm Point, but for some reason on this game's version of World's Edge. So I had to take it, but before I could take it, I was rudely distracted by some enemies that I had no issue killing because I am clearly the best player in the game and they don't put you with bots for the first game to make you feel like you're good. Anyway, I took the gravity cannon to what seemed to be the outskirts of Fragment. So of course, I'm an Apex player, I'm automatically drawn to Fragment. Plus, I want to see the Apex China version of Fragment to be fair. You know, not before I was rudely interrupted again and I think I became the kill leader, but in Chinese. Also, Pathfinder's grapple is really cool because it allows you to grapple the air. Please Apex, give us this type of grapple. But it wasn't long until I was on my way again into Fragment and it was definitely Fragment. Immediately I had the opportunity to do the most Apex thing ever when entering Chinese Fragment. I decided to do a Chinese third party. Yes, it wouldn't be an Apex game without third party in a random fight and it went pretty well. That is because this game puts you with bots for your first few games to make you feel better about yourself and get you more addicted to the game. Anyway, I got some kills without having to use my Chinese L-Star and looked in one of the enemy's death boxes and oh my gosh that's an R99 and also an R117 no we don't do R301s here it's a 117 apparently but just looking over this inventory is really cool because the items are so similar to ours while being so different I couldn't appreciate these weapons for too long though because before I knew it a random wraith was attacking me with her portal so of course I fought the wraith went through her portal which has a light blue tint instead of a purple tint it's a small differences that matter it seems like she was trying to attack me with a longbow after this honestly I just rolled through the lobby of real people that I was killing I was definitely killing real people by the way and then finally got I think 15 kills is that what that is? And got the victory royale. In the victory screen, I noticed this game has a cool little feature where you can screenshot a card which shows you your stats for the game. And it's just presented really nicely. And it even shows the date in the top right. And it even gives you a rating on the banner cards. I was SSS tier. You can't beat it. And my team, 
I carried them because they're all real people. Now I completed the first game, I had some freedom over the game. Now it was time to look at the cool little features of the game. My favourite part. The first thing that caught my attention when I entered the lobby was an immediate advertisement to buy some skins. So of course I followed it and oh my god, there are so many skin sales going on in this game. Like seriously, look at this. There's a gladiator sale with a really cool gladiator wraith skin. There's some weird octane skin. There's also a weird skin for Bangalore where she's a robot. There was a really cutesy lifeline skin and then some other really cool skins skins. I mean, this one has fire coming out of its arm. Really cool stuff. The game clearly tries hard to make skins, but this is where it gets a bit weird. To get skins in this game, you have to use a gacha system, which is basically gambling. You have to gamble to get any skin. It's like the Shadow Society event, but a bit more predatory somehow. So these skins might be really high effort, but oh my god, do they cost a lot. Chinese players have a huge reputation of spending a lot of money on games. So you will find a lot of games that are made for this region will have have heavy, heavy, heavy microtransactions. Regardless, one cool thing I did realize is that every single skin has its own unique select animation, which is a really cute little feature, and I wish R Apex did that more. I mean, maybe not with the price tag. I couldn't escape it though. When I went out of the store, it prompted me to enter some sort of ball game, so I did, and this is how you get skins normally. This game doesn't have Apex packs, you instead get things from this little vendor machine. And once again, this is a complete gacha gambling system that pressures you to spend a lot of money. I did roll it a few times and I don't think I got anything impressive. I think I literally got like game emojis, honestly. So you may think every aspect of this game seems really cool, but it is very, very badly monetized, like in a way that will completely drain your wallet. After that, I stumbled my way into the firing range. Once again, I understand nothing, so I just kept pressing buttons until I thought I got in the right place. And this is their firing range. It's somewhat similar to ours, but instead of being in the firing range alone, you have friends this time, which is actually really, really inconvenient because you have people shooting your dummies in the firing range. It's really, really annoying. I wanted to check out how their legends are different from ours, but also I wanted to check out the gun differences. And this is the full gun list. Oh my god, it's so uncanny how close these guns are to ours, yet how far away they are. I tried out a lot of the guns, and the main difference between this game and our Apex is the guns in the Chinese version do fire notably faster. And as I'm using these, you can probably tell what these are meant to be counterparts of. By the way, yes, the Kraber is a one-shot head shot. But let's get on to the legends because the legends have so many differences yet so little at the same time. First we have their version of Octane which instead of stimming himself with a syringe he drinks an energy drink and then just goes faster and his jump pad works a lot like R1 but feels really really awkward to put on the ground so I don't like this one. This is their version of Bangalore. She has two smoke charges that she can put down and also her role in Thunder Ult is the same. And I'm just going to point out the obvious. Why do they change every legend's skin colour? Why? In the Chinese version, this guy is Bloodhound. He has nowhere near as much drip as Bloodhound, but when he pops his tactical scan, you can see 360 scans all around you instead of just what's ahead of you. His ultimate, once again, is exactly the same as Bloodhound, but he just looks too edgy, honestly. I prefer our Bloodhound. Here's the fake Gibby that was shooting from the start. Their Gibby design is honestly really cool. This guy looks like a Power Ranger. And once again, he has the Gibby Bubble and also his ultimate, which will drop bombs. It works well with the Gibby Bubble. And don't worry, they didn't forget about the arm shield. It's there. This is where it gets interesting, though. This gentleman here is a legend we were meant to get in our version of Apex, but we never got. This guy is the old version of Revenant Reborn. A few months ago, it was revealed in a developer interview, Revenant Reborn was originally meant to have an ability where he could pull a random enemy into a 1v1 in the void and 1v1 them. And lo and behold, this is this guy's ability. So this guy is the old version of Revenant Reborn before Respawn changed him. Also, his tactical ability is Ash's tactical ability, I think. Wraith is literally Wraith, although I must point one thing out. Her animation for coming out of the void is really fast. So she has absolutely huge potential if you want to play this game, I guess. Crypto is very similar to our version of Crypto and honestly looks very similar. He's probably the legend that has the most similar design to our version of the character. But sometimes his drone gains its own autonomy and flies over to an enemy to ping them. So his drone is definitely better in the mobile version of the game. Valk is Valk. Her jetpack feels really, really smooth to use. This is because her jetpack doesn't really have animations for turning it on and off. She has two missile charges and her ultimate is once again 
again, very, very similar. One of the legends is this girl, and this is actually Caustic. She has the exact same abilities as Caustic, but she uses ice instead of gas. So she has an ice trap, and also her ultimate is a big area of effect ice bomb, which will slow tick and damage enemies in its area of effect. Why did they turn Caustic into a girl? I guess it might be censorship issues again. Maybe killing people with gas in China is against the law in a video game. Their version of Loba is this girl, and she actually has a really cool ability where instead of throwing a ring out, she turns into a fox and you can fly in any direction you want to. This also means you can fly straight up. This is a really cool ability. I like it. It's kind of like Valk's jetpack. And of course, she has the Loba Black Market Ultimate. There is one legend in this game that isn't similar to one of our legends, and it's this person. I don't know what these abilities do, but they aren't something I recognize from our version of Apex. I did attempt to play one more game, but then I realized something. On the second game, I was put into a match with actual humans. I noticed this when I actually got bodied really quickly. Somebody revived me. The revive ship looks pretty cool, but this game didn't go too well, and everyone just ended up leaving. I guess that's an issue of quads. You've got to rely on more people not to leave the game, which maybe we should consider when quads comes to normal Apex. Honestly, this game is going to be so cool to check up on every few months to see if they're diverging away from Apex, or they're going to keep copying our Apex in weird ways. It's really interesting to watch, but overall, this game's pretty solid. There'll be a small guide on installing it in the description, but honestly, it's hard and not really worth it. You've practically seen everything about this game here. Could our Apex learn some stuff from this? Yeah, but this game feels like it's primarily made to sell some drippy skins. So subscribe if you'd ever play this game.